did we want to perhaps start um, down this end and perhaps say your name and introduce yourself and let everybody at home know who you are? Hello, I'm Karen Hudson. I work at Echo Oil Art Centre in Halifax. Hello, my name is Estelle Nakapo. Thank you guys for joining us again in Can you collect it, making new works that are really exciting? Well, the, the art centre is open to all women artists, or all women um, in Arakou. And we have a, um, we have people that come like Cheryl, um, and she's waiting for me in the morning at 7 30, and, uh, and works right through to the 4 o'clock in the evening. And Caitlin is still also, you know, there every day. And it's that sort of momentum and that, um, uh, oh, I don't know, that, that passion that they have to be there and to create things that actually stimulates the other people to come in. And we've actually just started getting quite a few other people coming in and painting and, and doing work because there's, um, there's something happening in the art centre. Mm. And it's, um, and with the, um, the, the mermaid that we have um, just finished, it was, um, it was sort of a, a case of we ran out of canvas. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so there was a ghost net underneath the art centre, like just poking out of it. Oh, right. So I dragged it out from underneath the art centre and it was just full of um, two snake skins, a lot of dried mangoes and, and sticks and stuff. So I cut it all up and we started doing the, the binding with the raffia mm. and, um, and making the, the discs actually to begin um, the bowls. And just from having the discs there, you know, oh, like the base of, the, the, base of the, the bowls, you know, and I said, you know, I said, what do you think of this? Because there is a mermaid um, in the art centre that was made how many years ago? Eight years ago. Eight years ago. Is maybe. it a ghost net as well? Ghost net, yes, yeah. yeah, ghost net and raffia. And, um, and she actually came to kayak, I think, when she was made. And, um, but she's back in Arakuna now. And I said, help one of the discs up. And I said, what do you reckon? I said, the mermaid scale. And that's how the whole thing started. So, the, um, it's a, so she's found a sister? Yes. And it, where, did, does the other the first mermaid, um, we, were, other of you, were any of you involved in the creation of that, that work as well? Or? I was help wrapping, I was helping the deceased art, artist wrapping something. So I liked her rapping, so that's why when I seen Liz, she got be interested now because I remember helping the other lady. And now, yeah, mm -hmm. it's a it's a beautiful work. And um, uh, how, so how long did um, all the works here? I think there's how many pieces are in the exhibition? There's around eleven. Oh, uh, yeah. How long did that uh, take you guys to complete? Because it's not an an easy. Thing to do, which is weaving and so mm. intricately, and of course, if, if you can see um, the mermaid, it's 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 a uh, it's very magnificent work of art. Yeah, yeah it's um, the mermaid took ten months. Wow. Yeah, ten months, and that's working on it every day. Wow. Yeah, so it's, that's um, why you were there at seven o'clock every morning. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And we also had um, Darren Blackman, who was right. a supervisor there, and he made the um, the chicken wire and wire. Structure of the tail and the arms mm. and that, and unfortunately he left and let me finish the body. That's right, the end of it. Yes, so and but he, it got done in the end. That's well, it's, it, and it's magnificent. Um, and Darren was, um, he's a well-known artist uh, as well. Um, I believe he was brought in on a, on the project through a capital of employment, and that was, um, it was that how um, the creation of the work started? Was that sort of part and parcel of the establishing of the Women's Art Centre? No, I'm the supervisor for the art centre for Cape York Right, okay. Yeah, and Darren was another supervisor there and we sort of worked together on the, the structure of the mm -hmm. mermaid. And so I um, had the art centre open every day from 7.30 to 4, mm -hmm. five days a week. And whoever wants to come in, you know, can come in and um, we sort of have food and tea, coffee. It, it's a yarning place as well. It's a um, a well-being place, and it's a safe place for the ladies to come and to just um, 
young if they want to and sit down and do some artwork if they want to. No one's obliged to really um, do anything that they don't want to. Yeah, it's, yeah. Um, it's, it's all voluntary. And that's one of the great things with um, art and of course uh, Arakoon has such a long history with its um, creative arts movements and um, of course the great works. Um, it, art is more than just a sculpture, it's more than just something that you see, you know, down at Kaif and other events. It's a, it's a process and it's something that does bring community together. Yes. And, and as you say, it's sort of a, it's a, it's a recreational place as well. There's a lot of um, healing, there's a lot of getting along. Um, how long have you guys as artists been involved in um, the Art Centre or as artists as well? They've been there more than me since February I started actually. Oh, okay, right. And, um, then I'm doing my activities. And you'd said that a few years ago you'd helped um, with the creation of the first moment as well. Yeah, I see the old lady behind him. She used to interest in me. So I decided to help. Yeah, I did a few. Did a few for her. Okay. And so have you had, how did you um, sort of find art? Was it, was it at that stage or did you always have this burning creativity inside? And yeah, I love painting. But um, when I see Liz binding the strings, I just, and she told me about the Miami project, so she really got me interested. In yeah, that's, that, that got you yeah, interested. Because like you said, you said it was because the, um, you ran out of canvas. Yes. And it's something that I guess every artist has experienced. You know, I think I once painted on, a, on the back of, a, of an old door. Mm. It was just a wooden door because I had nothing left to paint on, so I thought, I, I, was desperate to do it. I remember um, there's some artists, I think John Michelle that's great in America, paint, used to paint on fridge doors yeah. that he'd find discarded out in the streets of New York. So it's, um, I guess it's that versatility of being able to, you know, like say as a painter, going, okay, how do I go from painting to sculpture, let alone weaving. Um, had you been um, involved in many ghost net creations in the past? Never. No, and the thing is, season we can't get supplies out yeah. so mm. you need to find something else to, to use mm. Mm. and um, yeah so no the mermaid was the first time I've ever um, sort of let my hand to that sort of um, work. Well it's, it's, it's executed masterfully as well and of course ghost nets are something synonymous with um, in Cape York and Torres Strait especially but it's something new to isn't it? Yeah. Yes, yes definitely. Will there be more? I mean, it took you ten months to do to do that one piece. Do you think you could do any more pieces if you've got another several years available uh, to, to work on one piece? Yeah, but no. yeah. More hands make light of work, so <laughs> And could you do yeah. more by yeah. next kayak? <laughs> oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. We, we already have plans oh. or something, but it's it's difficult to find those next. Yeah, that yeah. Um, that was one of the the big issues that I remember years ago working with. Arab Island and Pompro and Saduna down in New yes. South Australia. And uh, for Monaco, we took Australia Defending the Oceans, I think it was something like 60 ghost networks, a few mm -hmm. bronze sculptures from Alec Tapati as well, and Brian Robinson, um, to overseas, of course. And that was one of the hardest things, was once that exhibition took place, and then every, you know how it is, people want other works, they want mm -hmm. to show more, and um, they said, we just can't find ghost nets and one of the things that everybody had said is we we don't want to buy new fishing nets no. it defeats the purpose of that recycling and upcycling of material and transference of you know message I guess yes. um, do you remember is there any recollection of how the ghost net came to be under the, the, the art center was it, it ever was, been kept for it was brought in for the first moment oh. and, um, yeah yeah for the neighbors, yeah, yeah. It was back in the day, it was brought up there, and it's, um, it was just left. It's just like, well, now it's, um, it, it's got a new, uh, a new lease. It's a, it's a beautiful piece of work. Um, um, tell us a little bit, I guess, about, because it's not just the mermaid in this exhibition. There's, there's um, I think it's like nine or ten beautiful baskets um, that are woven as well. Um, and uh, those are really wonderful works, and I think they work quite well with, obviously, weaving as being the mm -hmm. central um, mode. Um, how did you go about pulling the exhibition together once the works were made or had you were you working towards 
this exhibition as a plan necessarily? Or? No, no, it just fell into place. That's good. Those things, yeah. It fell in, and of course, because with Kayaf, it worked out really serendipitously for us because we'd moved from one date in August to another date and um, to November, and then we moved online. Mm -hmm. So um, have, being able to do that in a way meant that this this fabulous exhibition was able to be part of Kayaf, which is great. Yes. Um, and what about you, you two down the end? Um, you said you came up from Townsville. Was it? Um, had you heard about the exhibition of Kai? No. Or just my in, my friend Rosie interested? just told me a few moments ago. I was just taking my brother, dropping him off somewhere. So she said, "This is on." But I'm really interested in Arakoon weaving. So I um, and and Indigenous women's weaving. Mm. It's um, something that I've liked from a long time back. Um, so I thought this is great. So we're we're here. Yeah. Well, yeah. thank you for coming. Yeah. And uh, it's great to have um, uh, people come. I and mean, this is one of the things. While well, we we. One of the reasons we went predominantly online for our programming was pe people from um, you know, interest, interstate weren't able to come. So it's great to know that um, that Kai pulls interstate visitors, and of course, it's a great time to come up. And what, a, what there's no better reason than to to come and in on a day and have a look at some wonderful art, of course. Um, this the the artwork, of course, the mermaid has a very personal and deep meaning. Um, you don't have to. Um, share um, if you if you don't feel comfortable. But um, if you did, did you want to perhaps explain to viewers a little bit more about the the concept and the message behind the artwork as well and its name? Uh, um, I lost a daughter through suicide seven years ago. Um, she was young, fourteen years old. Um, yeah, so I made something beautiful. I hope all young girls think twice about ending their life in the future. You know, there's still things to do in the world. Can mm -hmm. ever feel shut out? You know, do something that will hurt your mom and dad. Yeah, that's just my message to every young woman out there. Yeah, live life, be happy. And it's um, I, and I think being able to honor honor her in, in such a beautiful way, it's, it, I think it goes to show that. Art, and that's something that you know, First Nations people. We, we, we've been creators well, since the dawn of creation. I think it's a really powerful way to show that there's healing involved in what we do. I put a name, her initials, Zalo, after her name, Zani Edna Luana Yanaya Hansen. So that's what it's about. That's her name. So she always will be. And that's right. It's, be it's, it's a beautiful message, and like, thank you for sharing that with us all. And um, and it's and I think that's um, for the viewers out there. You know, a lot of the time when people come to exhibitions uh, or at galleries, um, especially when they're coming to an exhibition when there's not an event on, and you know, coming into the day, um, people don't really see further into a piece. Mm -hmm. um, it's more of an aesthetic um, appeal, I guess, when they're walking through a gallery. So the opportunity to be able to share greater insights into a piece of work is, is, is really valuable and we thank you very much for, for the opportunity, especially with Kaya. Um, um, with this exhibition, um, ha are there any plans to show um, Arakoon Ghost Nets um, perhaps further? This exhibition, will it be, what's the future for it? Where does we know? That's yeah. <laughs> they will like you said, this 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 exhibition fell into place just so perfectly. There could be more, you know. Well that's it, oh, well, we're hoping, yeah. Overseas, perhaps when the borders open up. That'd be lovely, it really would, yeah. And it and just inspires, you know, the people in America to actually, you know, continue um, creating artwork mm. because knowing that it's going to go further than the community mm. um, is inspiring for everyone. And it's a good, and like you say, with the um, art centre being a, 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 a place to congregate and to come into, um, you know, not not necessarily just work on art, but also to be with, and that is part of a creative process mm. too, is that collaboration. And that, um, I think that's a great opportunity, perhaps, for young people um, in Arakoon and, and having, you know, the product and the outcome of that daily work that you create and complete at the art centres. Um, is a great way to sort of show this is something you can get on board with, this is something positive, this is something that has opportunity and can go, go, go take you places. And yeah, the potential is definitely mm -hmm. there. So. 
How, um, one of the things that I really was very excited with with Kayef was this year find, um, learning that, um, because Aracoon for such a long time had been rather synonymous with the, the, the fabulous um, coup sculptures mm -hmm. and um, really uh, a, a, a greater presence of male artists, I guess, is what Aracoon would have been known with. And of course, Gwenny Mae was yeah. um, for that, for you know, back in that early Kayef period was the exception. Um, Obvious, obvious, and it's, it's a great way to open it up and to showcase as um, what we're doing with the online gallery is the two um, male, male works and, and female exhibition works. And I think that that's a great, I think that's a good message because I think it reminds people of that, that sometimes the separation, especially with the creative force, is, is, is there for a reason. Yes. And that men's business and women's business, it's still, they're still pillars of the way that First Nations um, people do operate, yes, yes. Um, and I think that's yeah. so. You guys are planning to you, you guys are planning to do more and many exhibitions, and perhaps, like I said, come see us next year, kind. Yeah. And you guys are going to come. Are, you're a local. Yes, I am. Yeah. Okay. So you'll have to come up from Townsville next year, and you'll have to bring her back. Yes, she'll come back. <laughs> yeah. And but, and you're a local. So do, are you terribly familiar with the Kansas Indigenous Sapa and, and say Araku? Artists? Um, I, I've seen their work um, during other Kayaf exhibitions and love their work. Mm. Um, I've been involved in a little bit of weaving myself um, and, and, and just love the process. Yeah. Mm. Well, tell us a little bit about the smaller works, I guess, as well. Um, the beautiful baskets. Um, how long would, would, would one of those take, I guess? I've never done any weaving. I'm a, I'm a painter, but I'm an abstract painter because it's a, a, a lot faster process. Five, six hours. That's great. And um, how, so the, the, these, all these individual uh, baskets would have been made, like they say, you didn't know you were having this exhibition on. So it's that, that urge to create and to make something beautiful. That's it, yeah. And what are the, only because I haven't got my glasses on, I can't see. What are, what are most of, I really can't see them at all. Um, what are, what's the materials made up in creating the um, baskets? Exactly the same as the net. Oh, is it from the same net too? Yes. Oh, okay, so they all belong together. So if anyone wants to buy them, do your best to buy the entire deck collection, of course. Um, and are they for sale, of course? Oh, they certainly are. Yes. So no, that's good, that's good. Um, and um, well again, yeah, when artworks is for sale, you never know, um, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll want to redo Monaco. Yes, <laughs> it took a lot of people to bring that together, but it was one of the things we'd, we'd scoured across the Cape and of course the, there was a brief period of ghost nets that was sort of, had started in uh, Mapu and that's where I'm from. I'm, I'm a link for Mapu and I think we might be related to Nam Nam Jean, but um, uh, Granny Zoe de Jersey, I think, had started making gross nets. I think, I mean, everyone had started from Sedona through that gross nets Australia movement, but it wasn't something that we that had really gotten too much attention. Of course, Arab and Pompo. Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited to see the gross net movement taking place in Oakland as well, mm -hmm. because um, do you, with I guess gross nets as the you know the the fishing nets that get discarded and entangle um, you know sea life and, and is that something that is a real, does that affect your um, river waterways up, up at Arakoon? Do they come that No, we don't that's get washed up in Arakoon. I think we do get a few. Mm. On the uh, coast, yeah. Yeah. you need a boat mm. Well that's the other thing too, like you said, with the, it's hard, they're hard to come by. Mm. Um, if, you, if, we, if you want to do more coast nets, you might have to, where do you find them from? But that's a, probably... I contacted the rangers, but they just seem to um, dispose of them as soon as they're up. They shouldn't. <laughs> well, how, how do they dispose of them, do you know? Or, um, I'm not quite sure. Because they, should, they shouldn't dispose of them because they should bring them to create fabulous artworks. Yes, okay. yeah. They're, they're, oh, well, yeah. We'll, because it does um, make people conscious of what it is that's floating around in the mm -hmm. sea, causing so much mm -hmm. devastation. But, and with with the ghost now, only because I know that the mermaid is on a, on a frame. It looks, and because when things are woven, it, I imagine there's if you were to unweave it and lay it all out, there'd be quite a lot. Of, of oh, how big was the original ghost net that went into these works? Huge. Yeah, really. Was really huge. Are, are there any other works that aren't on display that might have come from that same net? 
the big mermaid that is in hanging up in our canoe now, definitely her. Um, and there's a, a large, it would have been a huge bowl, yeah, outside, yeah, but that's, yeah, a lot of, a lot of net. And actually, because we ran out of that net, there's a net hanging on the um, art centre wall with all the god's eyes sort of woven into it. And I saw it there cutting through. <laughs> so so half of it's gone because we had to use it to <laughs> <laughs> so when you have to, um, when you when you get uh, needing new materials and walking around town, so you've got a net, can I have it? Yes, yeah, that's it. Yeah. 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 Uh, we've, we've just got a, a mobile phone ring, but that's good. That's fine. <laughs> um, I guess one thing I wanted to, um, I, I guess, I, you know, you said that the Art Centre is open every day, um, and you guys are always down there taking it. Yeah. Um, how many artists all, all together uh, form, form uh, I guess what we call the art, art community of Hurricane? Because it's, there's many. There's so many artists, not all of them come into the Art Centre. A, a few um, painters sort of actually solid. do it at home, yeah. Um, but because it's part of our Kekka employment, mm. there's um, it's no longer compulsory, but I was getting 45 women a day wow. coming in. Not all staying, yeah, yeah, because we didn't have the chairs and tables. <laughs> but um, you know, come in, have a cup of tea, coffee, you know, have a yarn, you know, and then they um, they go. But now, I think uh, Monday before we came up, I had 19. That's good. Yeah. So, so they come in, they and as I said, a few are staying now and then longer because it's um it's uh, voluntary. Online, which makes it more of an arts centre. Yes, yeah, I think that's a really key factor. Um, and of course, one of the things that I, I love about the the, new, the, the way that um, I guess Kai, in particular, um, showcasing and displaying the European works for this year is that new news. It exemplifies that new movement coming through. So mm. I, I reckon we'll be seeing some really exciting things coming yes. in the future now that there's a you know a greater hive. You know, arapin has been known for such a long time, but it's, what is it, you're still continuously surprised, engaged and enthralled by, by what artists do. Mm, I definitely And yeah. speaking of artists, um, tell us a little bit more about how Darren got, got into the program. How, what, did he even hear about the project or did you reach out to him through? No, Darren came, came um, he was working in Arapin um, mm. with council mm -hmm. and um, then he came into um, Kato. And yeah, and he just worked because Darren was a student of my tape when I was teaching. So um, so we've known each other for years. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he came in and started helping with the mermaid setting that up as well. But he's um, got a scholarship to go to Brisbane. How, how long did it take um, for him to create the frame? Oh, a long time, a long time. Because it's um, it was um, oh, it was really a, a labour of love to, to yeah. get that. And, um, and he's, he did the bottom of the tail, which is funny because when I was sewing it, because it was crunched up um, chicken wire inside mm. of the frame, I had to drop the needle in through the chicken wire and then Hope turn it around and right. then drop it down the other way and then do a stitch and then do it all again. That oh, wow. bottom of that tail to be more. That the fins, yeah. Yeah, just the fin part. Yeah. The rest of it, he, he saw the dilemma I was having <laughs> and then made the rest of it quite. Easier to access. access I could yeah. still put my hands inside. Because yeah. yeah. sometimes, yeah, that's the thing with um, ghost sets or any kind of um, framed sculpture is that it either it, the the weaving around it either strengthens it or it collapses the frame. And it's, yeah. it's really hard to. Oh no, he made it. Um, he made he um, pillars out of the chicken wire too to hold it up. Oh. So the structure as if you stripped the scales off, it's an amazing structure. Very that it yeah. yeah. And. Um, why, why a mermaid? Is it because of the, the, the of the mermaid, or is there a certain well, significance to you guys about um, mermaid as a mythical creature? There is a story in Arakoon about the mermaid, mm -hmm. um, but it was because of the bowls and then just pulling out to the old the mermaid. Yeah. Does the other just, one have the scales no, as well? No, it just wraps around. Oh, okay. Very, very different. Did, did you want to tell us a little bit about the mermaid story? 
Uh, or if it's if it's if it's, art, it's no one's here belongs to the story. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Well, so it's, really, it's, she's um, she's archetypal here, mm, yeah. mm. but there is a story. Mm. Yeah, she, because she um, appears to only serve the people. Mm. Yes, yeah. And the bush. And, and very very elusive across all, all the um, cultures around the world who have had mermaids mm. or mermaid, you know, similar type of um, um, spirit, I guess you'd say. And that's yeah. why she has no face. Um, she's it's like blank. Yeah. Because the um, the idea of the mermaid is that she's alluring to different people mm. because she appears to them differently. Well, I love the way she appears to us mm. here today. And, um, you know, I want to say thank you guys for joining us and for coming to Cairns. I'm glad that you were here. And, and, we, and your launch was last night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we, we um, live streamed the kayak launch together. So I thought that was nice. And um, yeah, thank you for having, and inviting us to be part of that night for sure. And I'm glad that you guys were part of this and that you guys were able to join us today as well. I think it was good. Did you, did perhaps you guys want to make any observations on the works or? I you haven't looked at it. We've got. Well, we'll have, we just got here. Just got <laughs> oh, like straight in. All yeah. right, okay. So we've just grabbed it quickly. So um, beautiful, though. Like you know, that something that can be so destructive, like a ghost net, and um, destroy where it's not supposed to be, and rubbish left in the wrong place, can turn into something so beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think. I think that's um, that tra transformation. Mm. It's beautiful, mm -hmm. and you know, I think it's really something that, um, while while um, you know, environmental issues have, have, is such part of the dialogue, you know, and all permeating through every culture and every sort of facet of it in Australia, I really think that it, it is First Nations artists that have really sort of mm -hmm. had that conversation in such a different way, and I think mm -hmm. perhaps a, a more effective way, I think, to, 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 to get the message across about how we care for country and for the uh, sea territories. Um, yeah, and I think that that's a great note. And of course, seeing as you guys have just come in, we'd better let you guys go and have a look at all the works, of course. And uh, you guys will be very busy. You've been, uh, or, uh, have you left the gallery yet? I saw you <laughs> late last night and then this morning. <laughs> um, what are you, are you guys planning to stay in Cairns for um, a, a little bit longer? And will, I guess, anybody who's in Cairns or able to get to Cairns be a, have a chance to maybe run into you through it? Here in the next couple we of days. Today, um, we'll fly out at two o'clock tomorrow. Two o'clock tomorrow, back home. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, thank you so much for sharing so much of your time since you were down uh, with us here at the Cairns Indigenous Art Fair. Um, I want to say thank you to everybody at home who's uh, tuned in to watch this uh, kind of conversation. Um, and please keep an eye on Cairns Indigenous Art Fair's Facebook page um, because that is the platform where all our scheduled events that you'll see in the program uh, will first be seen, which is through live streaming on Facebook. And then, of course, uh, will be available to be viewed on 2021.kf.com.au, uh, which is our virtual art fair. So thank you very much, and thank you, everybody, for joining and for sharing with us today. Thank you, Dad. Thank you.